Welcome to Speak for Yourself. I'm Marcel Swiley. He's Emmanuel Acho. Inspired today. That's our word. Bro, I'm inspired every day, man. It got to be better. I got to give y'all more. I got to give you more, Sal. Do you? Yeah, a little bit. It starts something. with you just doing more, and you doing a lot over there right now. Show the watch. Uh, so, uh, oh, he think he's All right. <laughs> well, let's get it started and switch gears in Brooklyn, where the Nets said earlier this week that Kyrie Irving cannot play or practice with the team till he's a full participant. This falls in line with New York's COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Last night, Kyrie was on Instagram Live and told his side of the story on his decision. Listen. I'm staying grounded in what I believe in. It's just as simple as that. It's not about being anti-vax or about being, uh, you know, on one side or the other. Like, it's just really about being true to what feels good for me. Uh, you know, I'm still uncertain about a lot of things, that, and that's okay. You know, if I'm going to be demonized for having more questions and taking my time to make a decision with my life, then that's just what it is. You know, like, that's, that's something I got to sit in. You know, I know the consequences of the decisions I make with my life. You know, I'm not here to sugarcoat any of that. Don't believe that I'm retiring. Don't believe that, <laughs> you know, I'm going to give up this game uh, for a vaccine mandate or staying unvaccinated. Don't believe any of that, man. So, Acho, what's your reaction to Kyrie Irving's comments? Um, my first reaction is this. I've seen a lot of people on television going at Kyrie Irving. So let me preface with clarifying something. Mm. Um, Kyrie Irving, by everything we know, is an incredible human being. Kyrie Irving, he donated $1.5 million to the WNBA, subsidizing their lack of income last year during COVID. Kyrie Irving supported women and women's rights and women's equality. Kyrie Irving bought a house for the family of George Floyd in the midst of that tragedy, a tragedy that shook up the entirety of the nation. Kyrie Irving standing for uh, injustice, systemic injustice, police brutality. Kyrie Irving bought 50,000 masks and donated six, fig six figures to indigenous people, mm. supporting the efforts of one indigenous people, but also COVID relief towards indigenous people. Kyrie Irving has supported a plethora of causes. I give credit to Kyrie Irving for the man that Kyrie Irving is. Salute to you, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we also must address the fact that Kyrie Irving is a contrarian without cause. Mm, mm. Kyrie Irving is a contrarian without cause. This is the whole thesis statement mm. of what everybody needs to be talking mm. about, but at least what I am going to be talking about. Do you all remember 2018? It was the heels of Kyrie Irving's three-year run in which he submitted that the earth was indeed flat and not spherical. Yeah. Finally, in 2018, when Kyrie Irving apologized for that, he said, sorry, I did not know the power of my words. He further on went to say, I just wanted to challenge everybody to do their own research because I like debate. Hmm. It's not as though Kyrie Irving ever fully believed that the earth was flat. Not his not my words, but his own. But Kyrie Irving said, I like debate. And I wanted to challenge people to do their own research. This is the M.O. of Kyrie Irving. Mm. We're seeing it again in 2021. Mm. The difference is whether the earth is flat or the earth is spherical, lives are not dependent upon that. Not imminently, at least. But oh. whether the vaccine helps or the vaccine doesn't, lives are dependent upon that information. Once again, Kyrie Irving, you have to know the power of your words. You cannot plead in 2021 the same ignorance you pled in 2018. You have matured, the earth has matured, and we are continuing to evolve. Mm. So like. I want to start simply by acknowledging Kyrie Irving, you're a phenomenal human being. Let me say that in case nobody else on television does today. Yeah. But also, Kyrie Irving, you are a contrarian without cause. Do not just kick up dust and hide your hands. If you want to kick up dust, do something to subsidize or do something to uh, equal out the playing field and the problems in which you've caused. Hmm. Okay, that was a balanced approach and I respect it and I like it. Um, I like Kyrie Irving. You know me. Mm -hmm. I'm fan man when it comes to Kyrie Big Irving fan. on that basketball court. Uh, so it pains me to go against Kyrie Irving in terms of what he's professing right now. Um, but let's just paint the picture because Kyrie's actually correct in terms of how this is dividing people. Um, I've had some division in my family. I told you before on air and off air. Um, some people in my family are not vaccinated and they're politicizing it. Uh, they're using it as a platform for them to speak on other issues by using COVID as the fashionable issue at large. Okay, 
I've had those discussions privately. Um, what Kyrie is talking about, which I agree with him, is there's a civil war going on right now in our society, it seems like. It's at least being portrayed as a battle of the brainwashed versus the brainless. I would like to raise my hand. I'm brainwashed, I guess. Because if you're vaccinated, you're brainwashed. Ah, the government got you too. You got jabbed. And if you're like Kyrie, who's unvaccinated, not anti-vax, just unvaccinated, then you must be brainless. What are you thinking? And all that kind of stuff. Now, that's the portrayal. Let's dive into the deeper details. And to me, this is so deep that it's really simple. Um, everyone wants to throw out the term research, like they some damn professors and geniuses. I learned this a long time ago. If you're genius at anything, you're lucky to be genius at something, but you're not genius at everything. Calm your ass down. Stop trying to act like you can do this and this and this well. So whenever I hear someone say, I'm doing my own research or I need to see the research, I'm just looking like, dude, how many times you gonna Google? Or are you really gonna go into the lab and start to do experiments on everything you've ever taken? Have you? Will you? If not, why start now? It's because of the politics at play. Here's the thing. Kyrie missed something that was really simple. And I don't know where in his development did he miss this step, but a lot of people seem like now they're gonna echo <laughs> the same sentiments. Here it is, Acho. He wants to choose differently but have the same consequences. Now, hold up. I know that that may go either over your head or under your feet. I don't know who you are as an individual receiving that message. But if you choose differently in this world, you won't have the same consequences. I have not given it any attributes if it's a positive or negative consequence, mm -hmm. but they won't be the same. For every action is an equal and opposite reaction, right? Yes, However, <laughs> if those actions are not equal, there will be inequity in the reactions. And that's what he's dealing with right now. He can't believe that there's inequity in his response. Well, let me tell you, in your term, broad term of using research, Kyrie, you can use math as well. I'm going to give you two examples of intimate things that affected me growing up. And this is where the math comes in. In our country, we have an issue with guns and guns violence, right? 20,000 people killed by guns last year, 24,000 with suicide round numbers, 44,000 in total. There was a virus two years ago no one ever talked about or heard about called COVID-19. You and I either, right? Since that time, in 18, 19 months, it has killed 720,000 Americans. Americans. Now, I just told you about a problem we have in our society with guns, right? And that has killed 44,000. Just in simple math, which one you think is a greater problem? Okay, let's stop. All right, bring it home, and hopefully the tears won't come. I lost my mother to breast cancer. Now, two things come from this. One, if you look at the numbers of breast cancer and cancer at large, those numbers, 599,000 people have died in a year span over cancer. COVID still trumps that in number of deaths. Now, which one's a greater problem? I'm not here to declare, because if you lose one person, you're going to think that's the greater problem, no matter what I bring out. But as a guy who had to grow up around guns and see that tragedy play out in my life and lose family members, friends, teammates, etc., and now a person who sits here without a mother because she was lost to cancer, and then now to know that the reason that so many people are noticing the cancer is on the rise and the shortage of emergency beds for those who have issues because unvaccinated people are letting this disease run rampant. I, all, I add all of that up to say to Kyrie Irving, hey man, I'm not going to tell you to shut up and dribble. I'm going to say dribble and then do your research. Now, I don't trust your research because right now I don't trust what you're saying. Too many people have been impacted by this. Too many lives have been lost. And we are still trying to trivialize this into something political. He talks about violence. He talks about justice. He talks about systemic racism. And these are all natural forces of life. Kyrie's taking in too much water, big dog, and I hope he sees the light of day. Mm. Sorry. Good. For cussing. Good. <laughs> um, man, that's hard to follow. Um, I'll say it like this, Sel. 
Kyrie Irving is presenting problems without a solution. And mm -hmm. I can't stand when people present problems without a solution. Because if you present to me a problem and you present no solution, then who is going to provide the solution to the problem that you presented? Ultimately, we're just stuck at a problem. Mm -hmm. And the problem mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have, because you, in fact, presented it. Kyrie Irving, <clears throat> Kyrie. you're presenting a problem. It's what you did when you tried to say that the earth was flat. Oh. Because uh, ancient philosopher, I believe it was the 1500s, Galileo, he dedicated his life, astronomy, astrology, study of everything atmospherical, mm. to re realizing that the earth was not in fact flat, it was spherical. He dedicated his life mm. so much so that he died on house arrest because of his beliefs. Damn. So there's a man who dedicates the entirety of his life, his expertise, to studying something. Mm. And you, Kyrie Irving, want to undermine that with no factual evidence, no data, no research. Mm. You just feel like listening to people debate. Your words, not my own. Kyrie Irving, once again, there are doctors, epidemiologists, go to school for seven years. You can go as a medical doctor up to 10 to 12 years. There are doctors who have dedicated seven to 10 years of their life yes. to study this vaccine. But if we just look at things from a logical perspective, oh, Kyrie Irving, he was not even in school after high school for seven months. Hmm. Now, hmm. if you want to be a voice to the voiceless, then I would just have to ask those voiceless, who would you trust? <laughs> the person who has <laughs> one semester of collegiate education that's not specialized in this field? or the person who has seven to 10 years of education primarily specialized in this field. Mm. Now, let me turn this on his head so yeah. it doesn't seem offensive to Kyrie. Who would you trust to give you NBA analysis? <laughs> the person who played college basketball for three months or the person who played in the NBA for seven to 10 years, mm. right? Like, mm. I'm not saying it mm. even to offend Kyrie because there's a space in which I offend everybody else for the sake of Kyrie. <laughs> if somebody gonna talk to me about the NBA, I'm listening to Kyrie Irving long before I listen to the person who hooped for three months in college. I give yeah. you that much right now. Yeah. But if somebody's going to talk to me about a vaccine, then I'm going to listen to the person who specialized for seven to 10 years long before the person who went to school for three months and did not even specialize in the field. If you are going to be a voice mm. to the voiceless, then you also have to be education to the educationless. <laughs> but you also then must be specifically educated in the field. Say it, because don't say, ah, I can't stand this. And I really like Kyrie. I'm not mad at Kyrie. I'm mad at the philosophy of it. Let's go. So <clears throat> don't present to me a problem and then just walk away. Hmm. Like, hmm. I walk on set, big dog. If I walk on set, man, Acho, you look terrible today. All right, welcome to speak. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tell me, hey, big dog. Hey, Acho, take the glasses off. Hey, Acho, maybe fix the cuff leaves. Hey, Acho, do something I'm about to watch. Hey, I, but don't just present to me a problem mm. with no solution mm. and expect that that is at all contributing to a beneficial partnership. Okay. Okay, now, 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 I have done that to you before. Um, I hope I've always given you a response that was adequate. But, uh, God, I love to bring levity because life's so heavy at times. And, and I agree with Kyrie there as well when he talks about this. If you guys haven't given it 20 minutes of, of your time in his Instagram Live, it's worth it. Um, especially if you're going to make judgment on Kyrie. It, either way, it's worth at least hearing it from him, the man himself. Um, but I want him to hear something from me, the man I am. Because Kyrie talks about uh, this is bigger than basketball. It's bigger than his teammates, his organization. Well, as a human being on this planet, Kyrie, uh, I want to talk to you as a teammate in the race of humanity. I want to talk to you as a teammate in humanity. And I want you to make sure you understand that I'm disappointed in you. Uh, because if you look at this situation, and let's just use our borders, for example, America. Because America, boy, we have tremendous resources. We're afforded so many luxuries. We work for so many luxuries. We're in a place of luxury in comparison to a lot of this world. Uh, we're in a place where now, because of that luxury, we don't feel the necessity to do these things, where other countries are begging for the same things that we think are just luxury, right? So a necessity in the world out at large, but to us, it's just another luxury. I'll do it. I'll get to it. We'll figure it out. I'm doing my research. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> America makes up 4% of the world population. I had to do a little bit of my math research. 4% of the world population, but 16%, 16% of the world's COVID deaths. 
We're the leading country. Make that make sense. I can tell you how you can make it make sense. It happens in our world as, as, as being sports analysts, as hosts, as everything. When we see rookies coming to this league, what's their complaint? Nothing. When we were rookies, what was our complaints? Not much. <laughs> you had them, you suppressed them. You worked, you worked, you worked. And then all of a sudden, we start to see when they pop. Then all of a sudden, what comes when they pop? They start popping off. <laughs> and you start to say, damn. You're entitled to your own opinion. Damn, I respect your space. Damn, I respect your opinion. But damn, what the hell are you talking about? It sounds like you're a little high on your horse, a little outside of your pay grade in terms of genius. I remember I had a teammate who promised his father. Kyrie did the same thing, I think. He promised his family he was going to go back and get his degree. Yes, I remember I had a teammate get confronted. I ain't going to say his name because this is kind of embarrassing, but it was funny in a moment. And everybody in the locker room was like, dog, we going to go back and get your degree. You keep talking about this degree you're going to get. You keep telling the papers that, but you ain't doing it. He said, man, my degree folds up in my wallet. Shut that room up. But we were giggling. But in reality, we weren't. Because you don't need a degree, Kyrie. You just need to do the simple math on this. Forget the politics. Forget the... He kept talking about his logic. Let's talk about the numbers. How in the hell is America sitting there? 16% of the world's population of deaths and COVID, but only 4% of the world's population at large. You make that make sense. I add all this up and doing my math research and saying this to the, those who are unvaccinated. We are all on the same team. It's just we're looking forward to you doing your part to helping this team succeed. I saw a study where it was occurred uh, incurring in New York City, where I used to reside. Ninety six percent of the new contractions were of the unvaccinated. Point three, three percent were fully vaccinated. Wherever you side in politics, wherever you side in logic, wherever you side in your philosophy, it's simple math. Come on, y'all. Let's do this together. Coming up, Jalen Hurts has a big matchup tonight against the defending champs. We'll tell you if he still needs to prove he's a franchise quarterback. Now, that was a shift. But first, the Cowboys are rolling right now. We'll tell you who deserves the most credit for their turnaround. Next on Speak for Yourself. Tonight, Thursday Night Football on Fox. Tom Brady and the Bucks are on a roll. But Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, and the Eagles might have something special for him in Philly. That's tonight, 7.30 Eastern on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. Well, let's head to a divisional rival of the Eagles. That's the Dallas Cowboys. Because mm -hmm. everything is going their way right now. They're on a four-game win streak and lead the NFC in total offense. Now, Cowboys executive Stephen Jones said earlier this week that this squad has a lot to prove. But he added... You can compare this year's Cowboys team to that 90s version that won three Super Bowls. Uh-oh, watch out now. That's high talk. That's high praise. Mm. So, Sal, who deserves the most credit for this Cowboys turnaround? It is Dak Prescott, the most important player, because he's playing the most important position, and he's playing it at the highest level. Let's talk about Dak Prescott, because I know everyone has an opinion on Dak Prescott, and usually that opinion is lower than the actual reality. Let's give him his flowers right now for two things. One, I brought this up yesterday, and I'm going to give it to you again. I have not seen this level of quarterback play since we faced Rich Gannon back in those early Oakland years, early 2000s Super Bowl time for the Oakland Raiders. Now, that doesn't mean you're the best quarterback because Rich Gannon was not the best quarterback of that era. That's Tom Brady was playing. Uh, Peyton Manning was out there playing. There were some dudes out there playing. But Rich Gannon fit like a glove in that system. He finally manipulated that system exactly how he wanted it. Every single play, every single read was exactly customized for Rich Gannon. I'm seeing the same thing with this Dallas offense. Now, the results in terms of them being second in the NFL in scoring, number one in the NFC in scoring, certainly support that. But more importantly, it's just the fact that what Dak is doing in this system is allowing everyone else to blossom in this system. And that's what Rich Gannon was able to do by playing that position so well. So Dak being there, playing it at this level, and this level is the highest level of Dak we've seen. More passing touchdowns, better completion percentage, and better passer rating than he did last year before the injury. I remind people, last year before the injury, that was an NFL historical pace Dak Prescott was on. But more importantly, it's because of the man who Dak Prescott is. Right. 
Think about this. We always talk about leadership, leadership. And we throw that around so much that we think that there are a lot of leaders out there, certainly on the team. Watch any NFL game. C, you see the C, captain. C, you see he's a leader. He's, we throw it around a loosely, a little too loosely for my flavor, for my liking. But Dak Prescott's more than the leader. Dak Prescott's more than the captain. He's a man. And when you're a man, you walk into any situation in this locker room and you're ready to deal with it. Think about all the firestorms that come your way when you're the Dallas Cowboy, when you're the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, when you're on a team that's underachieving as the Dallas Cowboys have been. And you're still steadying this ship. And now have it set on course for potentially a Super Bowl championship. Who has kept this together? Let's be real. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott? No, no, don't do that. Tony Pollard? Can't do that. CeeDee Lamp, Amari Cooper. Like, who? Look on the other side of the ball. Where do you want to go? Demarcus Lawrence? Who kept this thing together so that they could persevere to get to this place and potentially to their further goals of winning a championship? Oh, it's Dak Prescott, the man and the machine, the way he's manipulating this game. I hope he cuts you a piece of his check this uh, week. Uh, uh, was... If it's that much, it's more than I got. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, you're, everything you said about Dak Prescott yep. is completely accurate. Everything you said about Dak Prescott is correct. It's the best Dak Prescott I've ever seen. That best Dak Prescott we've ever seen. There you go. Um, but we know Dak Prescott was great last year. I remind you all, his last year versus this year, if y'all want to look at it, we can see his greatness. He had nine touchdown passes last year through four and a half quarters prior to getting injured. He mm. got 12 this year. Mm. Completion percentage, it's up 5%. Mm. Now, he doesn't have nearly as many yards, but he hasn't played from behind, so he hasn't had to. But last year, he was doing some things. Quarter passer rating, 100 last year, 115. Dak Prescott has been phenomenal. But so, for me to tell you who really deserves the credit, I got to get up and show you. got to go? I got to get up and show you. I got to go. go. Gotta I got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Oh, right don't you do it. I, I can see the right big now. board already. Go right come, back. Um, oh, come back. Come back. Oh, oh damn. Realized, Sal, what I've realized, oh. Cowboys fans, is this much. What? You can't have a great TV show without a great executive producer. Oh. You can't have a great song without a great songwriter. And you cannot have a great Dak Prescott without a phenomenal offensive coordinator. And Kellen Moore. To me, Kellen Moore is the biggest reason for this Dallas Cowboys turnaround. I'm going to show you one play that blew my mind and it blew the defender's mind so I'm going to tell you exactly <laughs> how it happened. Against the Giants, Tay Crowder, he has Ezekiel Elliott man-to-man -man coverage. It's man-to-man, mano-a-mano, cat coverage. But here's the problem. I'm the linebacker. I'm Tay Crowder circled in the red right there. What do I see? I see a couple things. One, Tony Pollard's going left, so my eyes are left first. Zeke is going right, so now my eyes are right. But Dak Prescott is looking down the middle, so I'm looking left, I'm looking right, and then I'm looking down the middle. Mm. If that doesn't work, hey, Kellen Moore has a little pick, rub route. CeeDee Lamb is coming to get in my way. So Kellen Moore not only manipulates the linebacker's eyes mentally, he manipulates the linebacker's body physically, and now Zeke just waltzes right into the end zone. Again, Dak Prescott has been playing phenomenal. I will not try to take anything away from him. Mm. But you do not have great quarterback play without excellent play calling. And Kellen Moore, he continuously displays phenomenal, next level, beyond belief play calling. To me, he's the reason for the Cowboys turnaround. Wow. So you basically went... He's the producer. Yeah. And so he's, he's my EP. He's my EP. He's Dr. Dre of the yes. NWA. And when he left, you thought it was going to fall apart. It didn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, it did. Uh, but uh, Ice Cube is Dak Prescott in this scenario, huh? And when he left, it didn't fall apart for him either. Did we doing Belichick and Brady again? Are we trying to do it? And this ain't Belichick. No, it's not. It's <laughs> okay. Not. This ain't Brady either. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand we're trying to give out a slice of the pie and to figure out who gets the bigger of the slice. It has to be the player. Tie goes to the player. Fair. Think about it. Fair. You brought this up before in reverse. Look at Belichick without Brady, mm -hmm. right? Look where Brady goes and look what happens to it, right? Like, it's almost like the whole jockey versus horse argument. Eddie De La Husse, one of the greatest, uh, Le Fit Pink Kai or something. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Give, give him a clunker and see how good a jockey he is. That's a good point. But, but give good him secretariat and then Acho could get on him if he loses 100 pounds, right? That's mm -hmm. the point. So I'm looking at it like Dak crosses the white lines. And when Dak crosses the white lines, Dak activates everything you're doing. Sidebar. Um, I've never heard a good song in my life that didn't have a banging beat. Versus, you know, people always like, oh, I love that song, the lyrics, the J. Cole kind of stuff. I'm like, uh -huh. if it ain't got a beat, it ain't got a chance, right? Yes. Okay, yes. That's kind of my point. That's your point to Kellen Moore. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes, yes. What's yours? My point to this is that Dak Prescott took that beat 
And you remember, he had different beats. He had different producers. He could work with anybody. He kind of like, uh, how do we say it? When you look at, uh, I, the only example I got really is receiver from Houston that goes to Arizona. What's my dog? DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins. Yep. I don't give a damn what he rapping on. He gonna make a banger. <laughs> like, like, that, that, he the only one. He rap on he the, Oswald's <laughs> beat, DJ Yates' beat. <laughs> my first Casio. Um, the thing is with Dak Prescott, though, he's taking it all, integrated it all, and he's always came out on top. I think early on, with Romo still there, fourth rounder, he was suppressing some of his greatness. Now he was learning on the fly as well. Mm -hmm. But he was like, look, team success, ultimately, that's what I'm caring about. And then we moved the goalposts on deck. We changed the beat on deck. We changed coaches on deck. And then we said, now we need to see what you're going to do. Dog, do you know how he's responded? And not only responded in excellence in elite play, but through adversity. This is a man because he's not succumbed to any pressures ever. Like, what has Dak done? You know, we always look at LeBron James. What has LeBron James ever done that's really egregious? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, he wore a button down where he should have wore a suit at the YMCA. <laughs> Other than that, what has he done? The decision? What has Dak done? Yeah. Nothing. He's a man beyond a leader, beyond the cap. That's a really good point. Um, honestly, Sal, if we're being real, this is kind of the pinnacle. We're seeing a phenomenal executive producer in Kellen Moore and a phenomenal talent in Dak Prescott. Okay. It's kind of like all of the lights, Kanye. Oh. Like, oh. you could say all of the lights was going to hit regardless. Yeah. I don't really... I don't really care what you say after that. It's going to go crazy. But then Kanye still got oh. on there. Mind you, he also song wrote it, but he didn't produce it. Kanye got on there and just did everything that needed to be done to make mm. it one of the greatest ever. Mm. I think you're right. Kellen Moore, to me, is phenomenal. I do not believe that Dak Prescott would be having the success without Kellen Moore. But conversely, I don't believe Kellen Moore would be having the success without uh, Dak Prescott. I uh. think they both elevated their level of play. But I do have one other name to throw into the hat, and I fervently believe this is actually the difference in the Dallas Cowboys. Mike McCarthy, thank you. No, finally. sir, not at all. Finally. Trayvon Diggs. And the reason I have to say this one, y'all, Cowboys defense was not that much better, is not that much better this year than last year. Please just look at it so y'all don't think I'm lying. Total defense, look at how many yards they give up. Cowboys defense this year gives up 14th less yards, ranked second better. Scoring defense, now they give up about two touchdowns less. But why? All you got to do is move down one more category. Takeaways. Cowboys currently have 12 takeaways through five weeks. They only had three last year. If you take the ball away, the opposing team can't score. Thus, your scoring defense is drastically better mm. while your total defense is not. Because they're getting yards, but you're getting interceptions. Why is the Cowboys defense so okay? Because it's not that <laughs> the Cowboys defense is so tolerable because of one man in Trayvon Diggs. Mm. If Diggs is not there and the Cowboys mm. do not have those additional six oh, turnovers. Oh, we're going to fight now. I've been waiting. Keep going. If they don't have those additional nope. six turnovers. Not your friend anymore. I do not think that the Dallas Cowboys nope. defense. I know the Cowboys nope. defense isn't this good and nope. the Cowboys team is We bonded over vaccination. I saw that. But now uh, I'm about to jab you. <laughs> Here comes your jab. Uh, I disagree with everything you just said, except you can give Diggs his credit. Give Diggs his credit. Okay. Because, look, he's the exclamation point to a defense that has changed this course in the first five weeks. Be real about this. Okay, you pointed out their total yardage yes, and sir. rankings, okay? Look at this. Rushing yards per game last year, 155. Average first five weeks, 79 this year. Hey, Diggs coming in and run support like that? He ain't even buckling up his chin strap. He coming in and run support like that? That's one demerit right there. 36 points per game in the first five games last year. This year, 23. Dig stopping all that? The, the, the turnovers. He helped. Oh, I gave you your turnovers. They had one interception last year under at five games. Now they got ten. But they can't score if they take the ball away. That's a Diggs thing to me, sir. Okay, is this a Diggs thing right talk here? To me, talk to me, talk to me. Is this a Diggs thing right here? 108 passer rating to the opponent's quarterbacks. Now it's 85. Diggs takes, first of all, if they throw the ball to you to you to get all those interceptions, they don't fully respect Not you yet. yet. Not yet. That's the point. They check film and they say, he's opportunistic, but we can burn him. And last time I checked, read a couple articles on this. They actually say that he gives up a lot of big plays, too, but he makes up for it because he gets the big takeaway. Oh, so if the quarterbacks are struggling because they're throwing the ball all around the yard, but they're also throwing it to you because they don't fully respect you yet, that's another issue. Third down, quarterbacks, 
not performing the same this year as last year. That has something to do with the defensive line. That has something to do with the pressure on there. I'll tell you, looking at me like you discussed. I, now we got to go to commercial. Tell, you discussed it. I telling you that you're wrong because I like you and I don't want to do it publicly. I'd rather do it in a commercial break. Well, then let the me problem, go to commercial. The problem is you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're wrong because why do teams have less rushing yards this year? Because they're not ahead of the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Last year they were always mm -hmm. ahead. Keep so going. Beat up every ball. stat. Beat up every stat. 36 to 23. Yes, that's points the turnover. Point, no, 36 no, points per game. If the team has just as many yards but has less points is because the other team is taking the ball away. Dog, I have I have a tool belt. I'm Batman. Whatever you want to do, I got a counterpunch for you. 36 points a game last year. You put it all on Diggs. This year, 23. That's all a Diggs issue? Diggs fixed all of that? The entire defense? He, one guy? he covered it up, so mm. He covered it mm. up. Salt no. can cover up a terrible meal. Yeah, never lie there. <laughs> Speaking of the two brothers right here. Coming up, Patrick Mahomes has feed better days. You ain't never lie. My son is addicted to salt. What is this? Our resident QB, Mark Sanchez. Let's go, Sanchez. Us answer if the league has caught up to the former MVP. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. Especially season salt. I'll throw that on. The Chiefs are sitting in last place. I said last place in AFC West. And Patrick Mahomes has six turnovers in their last three games. Yuck. KC's defense has been shaky, but Mahomes said Wednesday that his turnovers are not based on an urgency to score, to make up for the other side of the ball. Adding, quote, we try to score every single time we test the football. Damn it. We're joined now by Mark Sanchez, our Fox Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave you hanging, boy. Ain't hey, that your teammate? Party foul in the first 10 seconds. Good Lord. It must be a fire takeout here. No, no I tell training. Let's start with you, who got hung right there. Has the league caught up to Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, Lee. <laughs> he ain't your boy like that. At all. <laughs> um, he was just using that as stalling. He, <laughs> he ain't got no notes. <laughs> Sanchez like this. Um, no, the league hasn't caught up to Patrick oh, Mahomes. Now, the league has caught up to the Kansas City Chiefs. Ooh. But let's do our best to differentiate the difference between catching up to the Chiefs and catching up to Mahomes. I'm going. Mahomes literally leads the NFL in passing touchdowns. The job of a quarterback is to do a lot of things, but most importantly, it's to pass for touchdowns. Mm. At the point in which Patrick Mahomes leads the league in passing touchdowns and they quite literally, regardless of the figurative jargon we're going to use, they literally haven't caught up to Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Period. Here ends the lesson. But for the sake of my paycheck, I gotta continue teaching. Mm. Um, <laughs> no, they, 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 they ain't caught up also because if you were to take one, you're gonna take Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, mm. we're still taking Patrick Mahomes. Oh, now, we are? Is Herbert playing very well? Absolutely. And Herbert, to me, is top five right now, beyond the shadow of a doubt. Josh Allen, top five right now, beyond the shadow of a doubt. Lamar Jackson, top five right now, beyond the shadow of a doubt. But Patrick Mahomes has not been caught up to because Patrick Mahomes can still do things at levels in games that these players have not proven they are capable of doing, mainly because they haven't had the opportunity yet, so I'm mm. not going to knock them. Mm. But either way... They haven't done it. Mm. Have teams caught up to the Chiefs? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have teams caught up to Patrick Mahomes? Mm. Not at all. Mm. Um, I disagree with that. Um, and you got to remember, catching up to someone is not just physical. Remember, in playing football, it is a human chess match. Mm -hmm. And our coaches are there trying to put us in the best position so we can execute, correct? So a lot of it comes down to the mastermind of any position that you play. In this position, Patrick Mahomes is playing as great as he can. The problem is the chess pieces aren't moving the same, and it's in part because of Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, just in his mental makeup, is a gambler, and he hates being methodical. You can see it actually when it goes down in games. Let's go back a year. What was it? The Houston Texans game. Y'all remember that game? I remember that game because I remember it was, the, it was the opener, and everybody was like, why is Mahomes kind of struggling in this game? You know what it was? A lot of zone coverage. Hey, Mahomes, we know you want to risk it but we're going to make you go methodically down the field. Now they won the game, so everyone says, oh, he's good. But the blueprint was given to other chess masters out there. You saw it happen again. First time he plays against Justin Herbert, who just finds out four seconds before kickoff, hey, you're starting right now, and you're going against Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback in the game. And what is... What happens in that game? What does Justin Herbert do? Take him to a duel to overtime because that blueprint was out there. It was tried and executed somewhat during last season, but it was finally integrated fully and mixed and mastered in the Super Bowl last year. And then this year, teams have come out with an entire offseason saying, we got it. We know what we got to do. 
make Patrick Mahomes get frustrated with himself. And what happens? Andy Reid already talked about it. Andy Reid said this week, I think what's happening is he's getting out there and trying to get it all in one play. Well, that's his DNA. But more importantly, his defense is letting him down to making him. I agree with that. You agree with that? Yes, sir. That is making him risk it even more on every given play. I give it to you because you're a gambler and you're like Patrick Mahomes. Minus 500 million. You're like Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> if I, <laughs> All of us. <laughs> if I go to Vegas, I like to hit the clubs. If we're going to go to Vegas, I'm going to a club. I'm not going to gamble. You're going to gamble. I know you. Yes, sir. But if I walked up to you and said, hey, because of, because of your defense, Acho, you got five more minutes. You know what you're going to do? You're going to gamble a little harder, right? You know what you're going to do? Push a little more in because you like, ain't got much time. This defense is so bad. <laughs> that they're not giving him time on the field. This defense is so bad, it can't stop other teams. So when Patrick Mahomes is sitting there twiddling his thumbs for most of the game, he realizes, you know what I need to do? When I get in there, I'm going to risk it a little more. Push these chips into the middle. What has it led to? More turnovers already than he had two years ago and tying last year. It's just the mental makeup of Patrick Mahomes and the mental makeup of all the defensive coordinators mm. that have figured this formula out. Wow. So he's saying there's a blueprint. That's what and he's trying to say. In some ways, I agree. There's also a blueprint out there to stopping Brady. The problem is you got to execute it. Bang. Right? The Bucks did it in the Super Bowl last year. They said, hey, we're going to rush you with four and create pressure, just like the Giants did to Tom Brady the two times they beat him mm -hmm. in a Super Bowl. Yep. They create internal pressure. They move him off the spot. They make him a little jumpy in the pocket. You hit him a couple times. Boom. That's the blueprint. But you also need a little bit of luck. Mm -hmm. Okay, you also need a couple things to go your way. Yes, Speaking sir. of gambling and yes, luck sir. and all that. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at their schedule. Uh oh. Talk Browns, about it. Ravens, Talk Chargers, about it. Eagles, and eh, Bills. Okay. Four of those teams are playoff teams in the AFC. Facts. Okay. Browns, Ravens, Chargers, Bills. Nobody would be crazy to say they either win their division or they're runner up and they're in the and they're in the dance. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Cool. That's fair. Then Staley with that same. Idea, the defense coordinator from the Chargers, says we're going to play umbrella coverage. He went on Colin's show and said that. Yes. He said we're going to keep everything underneath mm -hmm. and make them go down the field 10 to 15 plays at a time. They'll screw up before we do. Fair. Mm -hmm. And what has he done recently? He's given the ball away. Thank you. Mahomes. He's mm -hmm. given the ball away. 11 giveaways this year. The problem is the defense ain't helping them. Thank you. Mm. They're not playing complimentary football. It's a little bit of both. I got to agree with both of you guys because – the defense has given up 32 points a game. They can't stop a nosebleed. And seven yards per play. Are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Seven yards a clip. Every time you snap the ball, seven yards, yeah, seven yards, seven yards. After our quarterback just turned it over and put us on the field with a short field to defend, it's not complimentary football. That's not his, hmm. you know, it, it, has it been in his DNA in college? Yes. Did he learn from Alex Smith? Did he get rid of some of those turnover ways? Yes. Is he pressing just a tick? Is the schedule pretty tough? Are, are there a lot of factors in this thing? Yes. Hmm. I think he's going to be just fine. I think down the stretch, I would have rather lost to those four teams now because you're going to see those teams again. Mm. One, I like that take. Here's my biggest point, though. You brought up the defense. You brought up the defense. Patrick Mahomes don't play defense. Okay. So if we are going to say his elite caught up to Patrick Mahomes, then that's why I say no because of points that both you and Mark Sanchez so eloquently displayed. The defense is 32nd in the league, 31st in yards, 32nd yeah, in But he's made hard on him. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's, he's not helping. That. He's not helping. He's not helping at all. But Sanchez, I'm sure you've been in this situation, or at least you understand the situation. Uh. If you know your defense can't get a stop, now all of a sudden you have to press more. It, yeah, puts, so, yeah. It's, it's the defense is forcing Patrick Mahomes not to necessarily be somebody he's not, mm. but to not be the best version of himself. Oh, so they, 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 I don't think they've caught up. No, 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 yeah. no. Okay, there's two ways to catch up to you. Either I run faster or than you, you run, yep. or you run slower yes, than you sir. used to. And Patrick Mahomes is not running his fastest right now. Let's just go there. Okay, sure. let's go back. 2018, first five games, averaging 35 points a game. Right now, 30. You may say, oh, that's not a problem. Well, whatever. That's only five points. Here's the difference. They're giving up 32. If you were, give, if you were giving us that 35, we win in those games. Point sure. differentials. Just simple math mm -hmm. right there. So already, I ain't going to pick on them. But then when you had 35 points per game, only three giveaways. Now, 30 points a game, 11 giveaways. Yeah, Come on, bro. You can't fewer points and more giveaways. That's a problem. Here's another problem. 
defenses, you're still going to see Patrick Mahomes shine because we used to always say it in defensive coordinators' rooms. We say, look, we're going to try and make them go down the field. 10, 15 play drives. Hope that they get a penalty, a turnover, a costly mistake. But we also have anxiety because we're like, what if we miss a tackle? What if all of a sudden they break one? And so both sides are sitting there with anxiety. Here's the problem. In his DNA, the way that he was raised to play the position, he like, yo, in case of emergency, break glass and throw that thing. <laughs> and he's throwing it now to the other team because of that pressure that is coming from his defense and what they're giving up. I agree. He's pressing. He's pressing just a That's little bit. That's it. And Listen, it's one, two decisions a game that change the outcome of mm -hmm. a game because those are the plays you look back at. And as the play gets longer, traditionally, he's gotten more and more intelligent. Yeah. As the play extends, he's like, okay, I'm even smarter with the ball. I'm smarter with the ball. Boom, gotcha. Or I'm smarter with the ball. It's covered. This one's going as a souvenir in the seventh row to the fans. So. <laughs> well, let's ask the real question then. Yeah. Because we keep talking about as a league caught up to, there's a difference between catching up to someone and catching someone. You notice know in track. Somebody, mm. oh, they catch it. Oh, if you, here if we you, go, yeah, track. Sorry, Sanchez. Uh, Mark, here we go. Yeah. For, for, how many turns? <laughs> <laughs> if you were to track me, what, what, okay. and all of a sudden you're that, who's getting smoke? Who getting what caught? What that means is they catching up. <laughs> But it don't mean they caught him yet. Yeah. So I will concede to the fact that mm. the Chargers have, are catching up. The Bills are catching up. The Ravens are catching up. The Browns are catching up. Right now, Marcellus Wiley has brought Mark Sanchez to the track stadium. They're sitting there <laughs> with their popcorn. And Sal and Sanchez are going, Ooh. <laughs> but they caught him just yet. No, so. no. You're going to see a surge. Like I said, there's yeah. pressure put on every defense that faces Patrick Mahomes. But he ain't going to change, dog. And that's the problem. With this defense, you have to drastically change. You have to play complementary football. You have to do it different. Takes me back to uh, one of the lyrics of my friend who I see almost daily, Jay-Z. You know, you know so. <laughs> my dog. You know, I had the name drop my dog. What's up, Jake? What's up? Wow. I'll see you later. Uh, anyway, uh, here's a lyric by him. This is just letting me know. I got 99 problems. Nah, no matter where you go, you are what you are, player. You can try to change, but that's just the top layer. And look, Alex oh, Smith worked with him, boy. changed that top layer. But when it all comes down to it, and he sees that defense, and he only has that many possessions, he gonna slang it. He gonna gamble. Coming up, does Jalen Hurts still need to prove he's a franchise quarterback? Mark is coming back to help us answer that next on Speak for Yourself. And I have no recall. I had to read that. Jalen Hurts and his Eagles have a big test when they host Tom Brady's Bucks tonight on Fox. Hurts has 10 total touchdowns this season, but is 20th in passer rating for the 2-3 and three Eagles. Mark is back, Sanchez, but Acho, does Jalen Hurts still needed to prove he's a franchise quarterback? Absolutely. One, you're talking to two former Eagles, one of which was a former quarterback, and Sanchez knows better than I, but I was there a little bit longer. I think that you got to prove it week in and week out in Philly. Mm. Real talk. Got like, it. let's uh, calling a spade a spade, like... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've mm. learned. Calling a heart a heart. Um, <laughs> apparently calling a spade a spade is like racially insensitive, so we're maturing. Yeah, yeah we're trying to grow so, up. Okay, so calling fluid. a club a club, <laughs> keeping it real with y'all, is in Philly, you got to prove it every single day. And Jalen Hurts has not proved it this year. If we're being real, they already want Jalen Hurts out of there. Mm. The reason we know this is just hear the fans, social media, reality, whatever world you want to live in. A quarter or two into the Panthers game, it was like, hey, man, we got to get rid of Jalen Hurts, man. Like, somebody got to do something about this. Somebody, please save us. They don't necessarily love Jalen Hurts as their starting quarterback. I get it. Mm. He hasn't earned the right to be loved. If you want to look at it, his passer rating ranks 20th. His completion percentage ranks 21st. <laughs> his passing yards per attempt rank 19th. And passing touchdowns, they're tied for 17th. Mm. So Jalen Hurts hasn't done anything yet to win the affection of the Eagles. But y'all got to remember, the owner of the Eagles, Jeffrey Lurie, a man who cut us both some checks, Sanchez is bigger than mine. Jeffrey Lurie of the <laughs> Eagles wrote the foreword to Doug Peterson's book, how to be a champion. Mm. Doug Peterson writes a book and he's out as a head coach in a year. <laughs> and the owner then wrote the forward to the Super Bowl winning coach, the first Super Bowl for the team. If they ain't love him, you think they love you, Jalen Hurts? <laughs> no, nope, not yet. So Jalen Hurts definitely has to show the Eagles, the Eagles fans, everybody that he's a franchise quarterback. Mm -mm. I'm going to agree. And, but here's what I'll say is, 
the market that he's in is completely unfair. It's pretty fickle. It's it's week to week at times, drive to drive, quarter to quarter. Like, <laughs> that's it's tough. Yeah. Tough. Yeah, okay? yeah. He's 10 games into his career, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see the numbers he's posting. He's just past middle of the pack, just just worse or below middle of the pack. Yeah. It's not terrible for your 10th start. Okay, that's not bad. He's five games into a new system. That's tough. Mm -hmm. That's tough for a rookie. That's tough for a second-year guy. Look at Tom Brady, how long it took for him to get entrenched in Bruce Arians' system. Okay, they were 7-5 and five at one point, right? Then ripped off a bunch of wins in a row. Also, 80% plus of this offense goes through him. True. It's that's all true. RPO. Oh. It's all gadget. It's all uh, read option. I mean, there's a lot of offense that he's dealing with. There's a lot on his plate. And who's there to help him? Who's really there to help him right now? Ertz? I mean, that offense doesn't lend itself to having a tight end like Ertz. It doesn't make sense. Ertz can be used somewhere else. He might jump on with a really good team and go make a run somewhere mm -hmm. because they're going to use him. Mm -hmm. uh, their defensive line hurt right now. It's not the same team that Nick Foles took to the playoffs mm -hmm. with Alshon Jeffries and Nelson Aguilar. They got Devontae Smith, promising young talent. But they need some more help in the receiving core. They're finally getting Gainwell involved. But they don't do a ton with their running backs, right? Like, they don't run the ball a lot. No. Okay? This is, it's so early and so premature to make a decision on somebody like him. He's shown you enough. All I'm saying is, if you say yes, he's our franchise guy, you will always have to gadget, scheme, formate, personnel, a, uh, a game plan to death. Because he is limited in his drop back passing ability. I really think that. Oh, we're going to get into that next layer. Um, just to answer the question, does he still need to prove he's a franchise quarterback? If you say yes, you're right. If you say no, you're also right. <laughs> That's the problem with this one. Let's be real. It's not just Philadelphia. The only place I ever got hit with a frozen battery. I don't know what the <laughs> hell. I lived in Buffalo and they weren't throwing batteries, but in Philly they were. Um, so many opportunities are afforded just based on perception. Of course. And that perception could be just draft status. I always tell this story because it really humbled me. And it also let me know that there were inequities in the NFL from hello. First training camp as a rookie, I'm a second round draft choice. So only one dude got it better than me as a rookie, right? And that was Antoine Smith. But there was this guy undrafted, Pat Williams. Pat was killing camp undrafted. Pat was killing camp undrafted. They kept pumping me up. I was like, dog, he way better than me. What y'all doing? We play in the same position. He killing me. Yeah. But I was afforded opportunities to grow and blossom based on draft status. Now, this is a different one because he's a second rounder himself. Taking all of a sudden replacing a franchise quarterback in Carson Wentz, it should be yours. Red carpet. But it wasn't red carpet. And that was the first stone thrown. We should have known at that moment, you get rid of a franchise quarterback at $128 million on a contract, and then you just don't give the keys over to the next guy who just replaced him? I wonder why. And then this comes to mind. As a man thinketh, mm. so is he. Mm. And as Howie Rosen thinketh, so is Jalen Hurst. As Nick Sirianni thinketh, so is Jalen Hurst. And I don't think they think well of him. I don't think they think highly of him. And that's the predicament he finds himself in. But if I'm Jalen Hurst, I got to find somebody. I got to get me my agent. I got to get me the homeboy in the league. Somebody has to point out, I am leading the Eagles in passing yards, rushing yards, and scrimmage touchdowns. Wait a minute, dog. <laughs> <laughs> the whole offense. Right the whole offense. Guy, yeah. <laughs> am I Lamar Jackson? And if I am, y'all not throwing dirt on Lamar Jackson like this, so why are you trying to do it to me, especially when I've only started nine games? So... Back to my original statement. If you think he needs to prove it, you're right. Yeah. If you don't think, you're right. I don't think this was the original plan. I think they thought Carson's our guy. Jalen is supplemental. He's an addition. He's our Taysom Hill-ish. Yeah, gotcha. Right? And yeah. if he has to, you know, squeak out a couple wins towards late in the season because Carson's banged up, fine. We could ride with him. But this wasn't the original idea. They didn't think it would mm. be so fragile with the QB1 with mm. Carson. You know, getting upset about the pick, which I understand. But so. here's, a, here's a real issue, though, Sanchez, and let's be honest <laughs> with everybody, y'all. Comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. It don't matter how good you have it in this Optimistic. life. If you start looking right, if you start looking left, and somebody got it better than you, then you'll forget how good you have it. Yes. Look around, man. You got Jalen Hurts, and the Eagles have it okay. But when you look at Justin Herbert, and he was thrust into action, <laughs> and he balls, and all of a sudden he sets a rookie yeah, touchdown but, record. When you look at Joe Burrow. 
And he has more 300-yard games than any rookie quarterback. When you look at Kyler Murray mm. and him and his small stature is currently the MVP favorite. Three. When you look at Lamar Jackson. No, don't do and it. And he was the 32nd overall pick, <laughs> and now he's put the team on the back. But you when you look at Josh at Allen. Like that. When you look at Josh Allen, when you look at when you look at all these young quarterbacks, Sanchez, you start to realize, wait a second. Do we have the worst of the young quarterbacks? And you don't even care that you have it okay. Mm. You're just mad that you got it worse than everybody else. And oh. I think that's where Eagles fans are. They're just mm. where a lot of people are in life. Like, you can have a great amount of money. You can have a great amount of anything. But if somebody got more than you, then all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. Wait a I ain't got it that good. Yes. And that's where the Eagles fans are. So oh. either Jalen Hurts, you change your actions or you pray that 55,000 people at Lincoln Financial Field will change theirs. And you know, as but good as I, they ain't going to change. Them I mean, you're comparing the elite of elite, okay? And I never thought Jalen, even in college, was elite. Those other guys you mentioned, mm. those workouts, their pro days, I mean, no offense, but he's the next tier below <clears> that. <throat> Just on talent, I think, on uh, you know accomplishments, you can't say, because he did a lot. He, he won a lot of games. Mm -hmm. But... Pure talent-wise, you're right. He's that next tier below all of his peers. But can't we all agree on this? Uh -oh. Because uh, uh, before Herbert was drafted, we did not think Herbert was going to be that good. You well, you sure. didn't. You, you didn't did. know for a sure. A lot of people did. A lot I of know, did but you know a mean? lot of people saw the talent. Like, yes. that's different but than the production. watching him on tape is different than watching, watching him on right. tape. But that's like, the same. Not even... Lamar Very Jackson. Close. We didn't think Lamar Jackson the was going to beat us, bro. Yeah, the tape. talent, though. That's a Come different on, conversation. He, it's different. It's a different... He he doesn't, like, wow you. Yeah. Is he good enough to win? Absolutely. But what did I say? you got to formate it. you got to scheme it. Okay. Yeah, Let's do this, lot. at least. Dak Prescott. Can we all at least agree yeah, yeah. on this oh, one? I was on the Dak train from the jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's day one. That's day one. Get on here. Hey, you are, you but he right. says something. I'm like, you said something. Tell he's him. a pure passer. He can drop back and sling it. When the chips are down, when it's fourth quarter, you know, games on the line, everybody's jobs mm. on the line. I trust Dak. I trust Justin Herbert. I trust these guys to drop back and throw. That's not what he does well. And Jalen Hurts just doesn't do that well. It's so good to have him on here every single week. That's not. That's just he, not he just thing. broke it down to us. He said, "I never thought he was elite." He watched the tape from college. Never get a second chance to make what? First impression. Mm -hmm. They watch the tape from college. And then they see him in practice. They see him in the games, and they're like, that's not elite. That's productive. Once again, yeah. we're repeating what we yes. saw in college. He can be he productive. He can be productive. But he if can you, be a winner. Yeah, but if you never think he's right. elite, as a man think of, so is he. Yes. So is Jalen Hurts stuck in that. And then he got stuck. He got stuck two ways. One, that early film told everyone he's tier two in terms of elite talent. Mm -hmm. And second, he had to replace Carson Wentz. And I don't know what kind of relationships y'all been in, but when I broke up and got my heart broke, and this organization got his heart broke, what are you, what, what's wrong with you, Carson? Why you can't play well? And now you mad? Oh, we got to break up. That night, watch Marcellus. He out. I'm in them streets. I was up Sunset, La Cienega. Look out. And that club connect was not going to. It wasn't going to last long, right? And Jalen Hurst is the club connect. Like, he just, after Carson Wentz, girl, stay away from him right now. He ain't right. This organization's not right. They're not properly assessing who he is. Because who is he? Jalen Hurts was better than Lamar Jackson last year. Look at these numbers. 282 yards per game. He wasn't better than Lamar Jackson. You can say he was better at things than Lamar Jackson. I'm going to say it again. He was better at Lamar Jackson <laughs> no. game to game no. starting their career. Gonna, not, oh, in the first Thank three you. Uh, oh, okay. 86 pass qualify it in then. the first, in the first three three games. Uh, uh, He was better than Lamar Jackson. He in only played three, three games. games. In the first last three year. games of his career. Yeah, yeah, that was the end of the sentence. But you didn't let me get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> lead with the headline. They tell you on television, lead with the I'm headline. I'm a radio guy. What do you want me to do? I'm sorry. I'm reading the prompter right now. That's all I can do. Coming up. Some players need to show us something in week six. Well, better a little bit. We'll name drop about that in the league's most intriguing matchup. Next, don't speak for yourself. Got a passer rating? Yards per game? Welcome back. We're just hours away from week six. Man, throw the rock. Kicking off in South Philly as the Eagles host Tom Brady and defending champs on Fox. Before that, let's take a look at some of the biggest storylines around the league in our week six watch. A lot of great matchups to look forward to, but I'll show which one is the most intriguing. Most intriguing matchup to me, I have to jump up because this one wasn't necessarily low-hanging fruit. How about the Cardinals and the Browns? The reason oh, is that's major. The sell is yes. this reason. Yes. The Browns cannot afford to go 3-3. Three and three. They just don't want to. Been hot. They've been on a roll. Mm -hmm. Early on in the season, at 3-1, and one, you had one loss to the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. That's tolerable. You lost to the Chiefs, and you only lost by one possession. Browns looking good. 
but then you lose to the Chargers. Uh-oh, three and two. If you lose to the Cardinals, now you're looking around like you're three and three. All of a sudden, are you all that good? The Cardinals, still so many people doubt them. I doubt that they're really that good. I know they're good, but are they that good? If you beat the Browns convincingly after beating the Rams convincingly, you got to shut up all your doubters. Mm, that is a great game right there. I don't know if my game beats your game, but it's more intriguing at least. <laughs> Let's talk about those Chargers at the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, is this the AFC Championship preview? Oh, I just hear Buffalo calling me right now. Like, I don't think so. But look at this matchup. You're talking about two of the elite quarterbacks out there playing today. You're talking about two top 10 scoring offenses, two top 10 total offenses. Look at the picture right next to me. That's a little better picture than what you got over there, Acho, right now. <laughs> you got a little more firepower in this intriguing matchup. It is going to be determining what's the AFC picture going to look like in the playoffs. Let's talk quarterbacks, and we have a matchup of former Oklahoma Heisman winners squaring off in Cleveland, plus a star-studded showdown between Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson. So, Acho, who's your quarterback to watch heading into week six? Don't get run up on, homie. What you got? Geno Smith. Geno Smith. Geno Smith making his first start since 2017. Why is this such a big deal? Because yeah, I think man. the Seahawks can still make the playoffs. But it's going to be dependent upon this man, Geno Smith. He went into the game against the Rams, and he gave the Seahawks a little bit of life. I'm not mm. denying that. Mm. But they're going to need more than just a little bit of life. Remember, Seahawks can still make the playoffs. Truly, they're competing against the second-best team in every division to get that last wild card spot. Yeah, yeah. Seahawks, you just got to be better than the Eagles. The Eagles aren't all that good. Panthers, they've now dropped two games. Seahawks, Panthers don't look all that good. Mm. The Saints, the Saints don't look all that good. Seahawks, y'all can get into the playoffs, but Geno Smith, I'm watching you because you have to get them there or at least close enough for Russell Wilson to take over. Mm, let me check that suit. Is there any rips under there? Because you were reaching for that one. <laughs> they can still make the playoffs, and it's because of Geno Smith. Man, let's just go to Jalen Hurst and the Philadelphia okay, Eagles. Like you that. just talked about them like and how that. the Philadelphia Eagles right now not looking that good. Jalen Hurts on the fence in terms of perception. Is he really playing well? Look, he's leading the team right now in passing yards, rushing yards, and and scrimmage touchdowns, but that's not good enough for the Philadelphia Brass. So now it's time to get off the fence. Jalen Hurts, you're going to be the next franchise quarterback or you're going to be the next guy in the quarterback carousel in Philly. Finally, let's take players with something to prove. Acho, who's your show me something player? I'm going back to my most intriguing matchup to find my show me something player. Baker Mayfield, oh, please yes. show me something. Baker, I told you, I've been tormented mm. all week mm. because of Baker Mayfield. Mm. Again, he led the Browns to the playoffs, and Baker Mayfield has been the best thing the Browns have seen mm. in two, three decades. Baker Mayfield's Ooh. been the best Browns quarterback in three decades. But here's the problem. Is Baker Mayfield good? Because good is the enemy of great. Mm. Browns fans, you can't just be content with Baker Mayfield because he's better than what you've had previously. That's like leaving a terrible relationship, getting into a decent relationship, and foregoing a great relationship mm. because decent is better than terrible. <laughs> Baker Mayfield, I'm not saying that you're decent, <laughs> but I need you to be great. Baker has to show me something, Sal. Mm. This is a great game against uh. another great mm. young quarterback, uh. number one overall uh. pick, also Oklahoma, same kind college system. Y'all are both undersized. This is the game, uh, Baker, please. Where you been all my life? I have never heard a better breakup letter than that one right there. When you're like, all right, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say a little more. I ain't going to go all the way there. You broke up with Baker Mayfield right Not now yet. on live TV. Not yet. Not yet. We'll see. We still together. I got a better matchup. I'm going with Justin Fields, and the matchup is him juxtaposed against the team he's going to face. Look at Justin Fields. Who are they playing? Oh, you got to play Green Bay. How's that going to look? I'll take you back to last year. Remember when Justin Herbert had to play against Patrick Mahomes and we got to see what's the gap between Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert? We're like, oh, it ain't that much of a gap from hello. Justin Fields, you're going against Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, we want to see what that gap looks like because there are some positives. Justin Fields, 2-1 and one as a starter. Congratulations, young man, as a rookie. But also, we know that you're at the bottom in terms of completion percentage and passer rating. Just want to see what that gap looks like between you, Justin Fields, and the great Aaron Rodgers. That'll do it for week six. Watch. Here we go. Oh, that is janky. <laughs> boy. <laughs> Broke bootleg. Be sure to watch us break it down all day. Your suit is tight. Golly. Why don't you shave your ankles at least? Bring something. Camera. Coming, up, coming up, Kyrie had a lot to say about his vaccination status. We'll give you our reaction next. And this spinning, I heard they spinning, but they ain't spinning where you from. Oh, that. I told oh, okay, you that's all right. Suit, that's bro. slow. It ain't got speed it like that. It's high. He shot it.
Let's head back to Brooklyn, where the Nets said earlier this week that Kyrie Irving cannot play or practice with the team till he's a full participant. This falls in line with New York's COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Last night, Kyrie was on Instagram Live and told his side of the story on his decision. Take a listen. I'm staying grounded in what I believe in. It's just as simple as that. It's not about being anti-vax or about being, uh, you know, on one side or the other. Like, it, it's just really about being true to what feels good for me. Uh, you know, I'm still uncertain about a lot of things. that, And that's okay. You know, if I'm going to be demonized for having more questions and taking my time to make a decision with my life, then that's just what it is. You know, like, that's that's something I got to sit in. You know, I know the consequences of the decisions I make with my life. You know, I'm not here to sugarcoat any of that. Don't believe that I'm retiring. Don't believe that, <laughs> you know, I'm going to give up this game uh, for a vaccine mandate or staying unvaccinated. Don't believe any of that, man. Hmm, Acho. What's your reaction to Kyrie Irving's comments? My reaction is to further investigate, which Kyrie is proclaiming that he is doing. But if he was further doing his research, I would assume he would have drawn a conclusion by now. Mm. Um, because my further research into Kyrie Irving has led me to this. October 1st, 2018, after Kyrie Irving had finally clarified that the Earth was indeed spherical and it was not flat like Kyrie Irving tried to submit and tried to suppose, Kyrie Irving said... I do research on both sides. I'm not against anyone that thinks the earth is round. I'm not against anyone that thinks the earth is flat. Very similar to his statements from Instagram Live. Kyrie then goes on to say this, and listen to this very closely. Mm. I just love hearing the debate. At the time, I was huge into conspiracies, close quote. Kyrie Irving is a self-proclaimed conspiracy theorist. Mm. Kyrie Irving is self-proclaimed being very into debate. Kyrie Irving has always straddled the fence. He respects one side and he respects the other side. But at times, there does not necessarily always need to be full understanding of another side. The devil does not indeed always need an advocate. So, <clears throat> Kyrie Irving is this type of individual. He just does not trust the history of this country. That I do indeed oh. understand. Mm. He has said that at times, and he has said that. I don't trust what we have learned in class. I don't trust the history of America. I get all that, Kyrie. But if you continue to navigate life, and also encourage either by your words or by your actions others to navigate life without the trust of those with more experience, then you will lead others into peculiar and dangerous situations. Mm. And that is where we are now with Kyrie Irving. I'm not mm. shocked or I'm not angered by Kyrie Irving because I understand where he's coming from. I just need Kyrie Irving to understand that he does not understand. <laughs> Like, I fully understand the man in which Kyrie Irving is. The reason I understand the man in which Kyrie Irving is, if you want to learn about somebody, read about them. Mm. If I want to learn about Marcellus Wiley, I'm going to read Marcellus Wiley's book. If I'm going to want to learn about Oprah Winfrey, I'm going to read Oprah Winfrey's mm. work. If you want to learn about Kyrie Irving, just read what the man has said. And he said, I love hearing both sides. I love debate. I was huge into conspiracies. Well, it appears once again, Marcellus Wiley, that Kyrie Irving has reverted back into or never left that mindset in which he thought the earth was flat. But again, the difference is this. If you think the earth is flat versus spherical, that is not costing anyone their life. If you think that people should not get the vaccine versus should, that is costing 720,000 Americans, as you once reminded me again, their lives. Mm. That indeed is the difference. And unfortunately, that number grows by every breath we take. Um, and it's growing because of the contraction of the virus. And it's growing at a rate that it doesn't have to grow because of those who are unvaccinated. It's just that simple. The vaccines provide the best protection against infection. The vaccine provides the best protection mm -hmm. against infection. Mm -hmm. We're trying to mitigate the growing and spreading of a virus, okay? We're not trying to solve world issues by using this as propaganda to now extract other conversations you want from just talking about a vaccination. That's what I don't like. The mapping on of all the other issues onto just simply, can you do something that can help not only yourself, but help others around you? Because we are teammates as humans in humanity. And he talks about the Brooklyn Nets as a team, and he talks about the organization as a team, but I'm your teammate as a human being, big dog. And there are lives being lost in part because of the 
unvaccinated infection rate. Let's just be real about that. Also, what's being lost and not really getting tremendous coverage is the fact that people who have other serious issues are now not getting the proper resources because the unvaccinated are filling up emergency rooms. So I always hear the unvaccinated come at me and they say, well, you if you get vaccinated, you're still going to contract it. OK, but we're saying mitigating, mitigating. That means reducing. We're talking about risk factors here. Let me give it to you like this. There are no solutions. There are just trade offs. So. I don't think Kyrie Irving understands this. I think Kyrie Irving is looking for a world solution and he's trying to use vaccination as his platform. This is the problem. As I sit here right now looking at all of the issues that are going around in this world, I know that if you really want to do some research, as Kyrie Irving is saying he's doing his due diligence, you will know that a lot of those same issues have been forever more, have been forever long. And you're not going to stop those issues by trying to take a grandstand for this issue. Here we go. Why do I hear about social injustice when I'm hearing about a vaccination? That let people tell on themselves. My coach told me this when I was coming out getting drafted. I remember being at Dorsey and Coach James, I said, man, he's like, you got any questions, man? Because I know you're at the next level. And I said, coach, people are already coming at me crazy. The day before the draft, I was just Marcellus. Now I'm some other dude to these people. He was like, just listen to people. They'll always tell on themselves. I'm listening to Kyrie Irving telling himself. As much as he's talking about logic, he's also conflating. He's also bringing in other issues. He's also bringing in other factors that are not exclusive in a vacuum to just something called a vaccination. When I see someone do that, I know that they are sitting there on the soapbox for other reasons than what we're intending to talk about. Kyrie, do what you got to do, but that comes with consequences. This is the issue. You cannot make a decision that is different than another decision and expect the same consequences. That is elementary thought. If you think you could do the same thing and now all of a sudden, oh, you're going to do something different. We're on two different sides, but we're going to meet together. That's not how it works in the world of consequences. I hope he gets it right. I hope he does what he needs to do. And if he wants to stay away, it's his prerogative. So <clears throat> let's also break this down. I like removing the words that I'm using from a subject matter, pivoting it to another subject matter oh. so that people can more easily digest it. Um, if the Irving family, Kyrie Irving's relatives, had previously told several lies before, hmm. but there was a life and death situation. Hmm. There was a life and death situation, and it was a question in regards to NBA basketball. Hmm. Am I going to trust mm. the individual that played college sports, not necessarily basketball, but played college sports for three months? Or am I going to trust Kyrie Irving, who has played in the National Basketball Association for 11 years, yeah. given there was a question that life and death was dependent upon about the NBA? I'm going to trust Kyrie Irving. Mm. I understand the Irving family, maybe his relatives and some people that existed before him have told some lies before. But I'm going to trust Kyrie because he has 11 years of expertise about the question at hand versus the individual who has three months of expertise about not even the specific question at hand. Why do I bring that up? Kyrie Irving, my dog went to college for three to seven months. Yeah. And not even specific the study of epidemiology or the specific study in any sort of medical field research. Are we really going to allow Kyrie to be a voice to the voiceless? Because that's what he says he's trying to be. Mm. Are we going to allow Kyrie to be a voice to the voiceless when that is his credentials as opposed to an individual who's gone to medical school for seven to ten and sometimes 12 years all inclusive? And when I really break it down like that, it would be laughable. Yeah. Not just laughable, it would be an insult to heed the advice of the individual with three months or seven months of experience versus the individual with a decade of experience. Mm. Kyrie, just look at it from another lens. Or those who are looking at Kyrie, I submit that they should also look at it from another lens. Yeah, th that lens, people got to understand that your scope of genius is so limited if you're afforded any at all. Like, let's just be real. Not every talent hits a target, and what they say, genius hits the target you don't see. Yes, I, I put this out there yesterday. Talent hits a target that no one else can hit. Genius hits a target that no one else can see. Oh, look at those parallel worlds.
Come on, man. Like, uh, I, talking to Magic Johnson, who wrote Forward in my book as well, he, Magic will tell you that he is a... He is well supported by a team that carries out all of his endeavors with him as a leader. But you notice the part that was team. Like, you got to know what you know and know what you don't know. And then you got to fill in those blanks with people that can help you understand it completely. I don't think that Kyrie right now is in that position where he's understanding this completely. Uh, I brought it up before and I want to bring it up right now because when you talk about this situation... Some things, life comes at you fast, man, and you, you just got to protect yourself, duck and take cover, right? Two years ago, we weren't talking about this virus. No one contracted it. No one knew about it, et cetera, et cetera. Now it has taken 720,000 American lives, over four and a half million people worldwide. Four and a half million people worldwide. Okay. Many of those people didn't have a choice whether it's because of the country and the resources or because before the vaccine was even allowed. Just unfortunate circumstances. Then there's a time where we're currently living in where at least Americans, you have a choice. But now we're going to use that choice as luxury where other people are dying for that as necessity. Look at the difference in that. Look at the contrast in that. And I give it to you like it came to me. Ah, oh, man, I got to do it again. Um, talk about growing up for me, man. Two things hit me. Guns as a problem. Gun violence as a problem. Like, the biggest problem in my neighborhood was just like, dog, what happened to, what happened to Cozy? My teammate, gone. Uh, what happened to Uncle Ju Oh, gone. Guns, guns, guns. Looked it up. 20,000 people killed last year. Very deadly year. Most deadly year by gun violence in the last two decades. 20,000. 20,000 Americans. We're talking about 720,000. Now, I bring up cancer, which is north of 600,000 people that have died. I lost my mother to breast cancer, so I'm certainly impacted by this. I just told you 20,000. I just told you 600,000. That's 620,000. I just told you that COVID has taken 720,000 people. Now, here's the big difference. There's no vaccine for cancer. There's no option for you to... Oh, Maybe mitigate the response of this contraction. Not for cancer. Even in the, the, the epidemic we have in terms of gun violence within our borders, where's the vaccine? You can't control people's minds and emotions and angers and how they're going to use those. But we have something here. And it's the most deadliest of all, what I just named. And then when I see people being so irresponsible with that choice, and then they're using their logic, which is incomplete, but they won't use the math, which is complete, which is beyond logic. It's why it's mathematics. I get disgusted. I get disappointed. And I'm not even taking it to Kyrie, the person. I'm taking it to the irresponsible teammate in this humanity, race, and conversation that we're supposed to be connected in. So Kyrie could do what he wants to do. The problem with it is it's infecting those people who can't do what they want to do. I'm asthmatic. I'm vaccinated. My three children are not vaccinated. My three children are asthmatic. If they were to contract this because someone unvaccinated, and last time I checked, 96% of the cases are unvaccinated. 0.33% are fully vaccinated. Y'all can play with the numbers all you want. It's going to give you the same principle and belief. If you're unvaccinated, you're putting yourself and others at harm's way to a greater degree than you need to. Why do that? I have, I have one more kind of thought and conversation to have with you, Sal. Is, I think we all can agree that America is the greatest country in the world. Man. We all can agree on Travel that. if you don't believe if it. If you don't believe in travel, <laughs> I've been to several countries. I have a couple passports, and I can agree that America is the greatest country in the world. Mm. But if America is the greatest country in the world, then America should, too, be great at very big problems. Mm. You brought it up to my attention that America makes up 4% of the world's population. Yes. But makes up 16% of yes. COVID deaths in the world. Oh, come on now. So, if America is in fact the greatest country in the world, and we all can agree on that fact that America is the greatest country in the world, then why are we the worst as it pertains to dealing with this pandemic? Mm -hmm. We have to do deductive reasoning mm -hmm. as citizens of a great 
country. Yeah. If we are the greatest country in the world, then we have to be malleable enough to always be able to move and form and change and adjust in order to maintain being the greatest country in the world. You can't be the greatest country in the world, but be the deadliest country as it pertains to the biggest issue in our world. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense. So again, to all Americans that submit that America is the greatest country in the world, and I will be the first to testify to that truth then we need to also be pliable enough with our feelings, with our knowledge, to make sure that we are also the greatest country in the world as it pertains to dealing with this virus. Yes, yes, yes. Whew. It's disappointing, man. It's disappointing because we're, we're not pulling together, even if we have different viewpoints. We're not pulling together. Like, you can think all you want about how this world is turning and spinning, but dog, we got to all stick together in terms of our health and survival and certainly not impact others who don't have the same defense mechanisms. Here's the thing. I learned this because growing up, humble beginnings, as they say, and now having some luxuries, that luxury is a conduit to complaining. And I've learned this from everyone I've dated, too, as well. Because, you know, you're dating somebody and then all of a sudden they're dating you and it's like, whoa, we're eating here, we're going here. Then all of a sudden the laundry list starts to appear of the complaints that I had once I went from rags to riches. And then with other people who get around me. And what I started to realize is what my daddy told me a long time ago. Remember I told you this. I was looking at my dad. I was like, man, ain't nothing in here to eat. My dad said, hey, are you hungry or do you want something to eat? Now, when you answer that, you know the difference between what America is doing right now and what America could be doing right now. There is a difference between necessity and luxury. But we kind of high off the horse right now. We a little fat off the hog right now. So vaccination, I get it. I don't, I don't know. And that's so disturbing to look at us. My last point is when people want to be the voice of the voiceless, as my pastor once said, it ain't going to do you no damn good being broke and hungry. <laughs> and then trying to help somebody who's broken, hungry. So Kyrie, use your voice, use it properly, magnify the volume of it by actually showing the distance between how you've grown and where everyone else needs to grow. Coming up, Cowboys offense is red hot. Boy, transition time, good Lord. But we'll tell you if Mike McCarthy should be worried about O.C. Kellen Moore taking his job. That's next Don't Speak for Yourself. Let's head back to Dallas, where the Cowboys have won four straight games and led the NFC in total offense. Our own Troy Aikman said the best thing right now for them is Dak Prescott and offensive coordinator Kellen Moore are, quote, just lockstep together in how they're thinking. Cowboys legend also thinks Moore has the title of head coach in his future. Take a listen. Mm. I think that it only makes sense that he would be a candidate. He was last year, you know, for the Boise State job, which obviously makes a lot of sense since that's where he played, but also he interviewed with the Philadelphia Eagles for that job. So I think he'll get more interviews if this team continues to do what we've seen up to this point. I know that Dak realizes, I talked to him about it the other day, he realizes that in all likelihood, Kellen will not be his offensive coordinator for, for much longer um, because he's impressed so many people around the league. Hmm. Ah, Charles, should Mike McCarthy be worried about Kellen Moore taking his job? Man, absolutely. And um, if we're being honest, Kellen Moore definitely, prob definitely should take Mike McCarthy's job in the Ooh. foreseeable future. Here is why. You look desperately. You search high, low, left, <laughs> right, far, and wide for Kellen Moore. Okay. He checks all the boxes of what you want in an NFL coach. Brilliant offensive mind, relatable, young, uh, savvy. Mm. That's what Kellen Moore is. That's the boxes that he checks. Okay. Cowboys, y'all got Kellen Moore sitting in your meeting rooms, on your offensive staff. And Kellen Moore, by all intents and purposes, is just as capable of Mike McCarthy. Now, really? here's the real detail. Let me cut to the chase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To to Google chase. that talk. Let me what? cut to the chase. What? The worst thing you could do in life when you have a profession is make yourself expendable. Mm. It's the worst thing you can mm -hmm, do. Mm -hmm. Make yourself expendable. You. Is let people realize, oh, wait a second, I can be replaced. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's a story, I believe it is, what, Wally Pip Lou Gehrig? I'm sure yeah, yeah, that's it. what happened. Wally Pip. He's like, no you games. know what? Nah, <laughs> I'm good. I'll take this day off. Yeah, I think yeah. this is as a legend has it. Lou Gehrig replaces Wally Pip in the Yankees starting lineup. Mm -hmm. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And we never hear of Wally Pip again. again. And Lou Gehrig goes on to be legendary. With that being said, Mike McCarthy, you don't? 
call the plays offensively. Kellen Moore does that. Mike McCarthy, you don't call the plays defensively. Dan Quinn does that. So, Mike McCarthy, what are you doing? You're motivating? Well, last time we checked on HBO Hard Knocks, oh, you don't even do that all different. that well. Wow. Be honest. Wow. So, as I look at it, Mike McCarthy has made himself expendable. Kellen Moore is the Cowboys head coach of the future. Man, stop. Ain't no way he's going to be the coach of the Dallas Cowboys. First of all, put some respect on Mike McCarthy. Mike Mack made it. Put some respect on that man's name. Only nine of them dudes walking around here with jewelry that you and I don't have. He's an active head coach that won a Super Bowl championship. We're going to respect that. we also going to respect that the Cowboys are finally more hyped than just what we used to seeing. We're used to seeing them like hype, 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 hype. They're more than hype now. They're legit contenders. Wonder how that happened. Was it under Jason Gear we saw it last time? Yes, yeah. one year. Yeah. And now we got it here. So now we're going to mess with the formula, as you said. Jenga. Jenga, please. You said in Jenga, to mess, don't mess with it when it's going well, but now you want to mess with it. Jenga, please. Here we go. This is why Kellen Moore really can't do it, and I know why he can't do it. He can't lay in that bed that he just saw Mike McCarthy lay in. Think about it. If Mike McCarthy is replaced by Kellen Moore, can he trust Jerry Jones? Because Mike McCarthy got this thing rolling. <laughs> Think, who, if she broke up with him to holla at you, I'm going to tell you right now, it better not be long, dog. I know what it need to be. We're going to keep this in the box. Because mm -mm, we ain't trusting that. You can't trust Jerry Jones if he's like, get rid of Mike McCarthy. Come on, Kellen. You've been what I've been waiting for. Yeah, all right. They say something about that. They always talk about people um, who really ain't happy with themselves. They're not that good in their second marriage either. Or their third or their fourth. You know why? Because they're always seeking. If you don't feel like you found it with Mike McCarthy, Super Bowl winning coach, got this thing finally on track, <laughs> and you're going to try and say, oh, it's a young one out there, though, Kellen. You seen Kellen? Come on over here, Kellen, and you my type. Man, hell no, that is not going to work. So if it's good, why would they break up? Why would Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones break up? It's good, right? Didn't you learn from Jimmy Johnson in that experience? And you can't break up a happy home. So you're going to look at Jerry like he's insincere. If you got this thing rolling with Mike, why would you break it up? Now, if it's bad, here's the problem. Why would Kellen sign up for this? Like, you know how it goes being a head coach for the Dallas Cowboys. It's different. And if it's going bad, why would you sign up for that if you're Kellen Moore? You got to go somewhere else. The reputation of Jerry Jones and this job opportunity precedes it. So it makes no sense. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly, you can't lay in the same bed. That big-ass bed, too. Mike McCarthy laying in. Mike Matt made it. Sell, it, it makes sense for this reason. No, it doesn't. Kellen Moore was the head coach the Cowboys were looking for when they hired Mike McCarthy. Let's make no mistake about that. Cowboys, who were the names? Uh, Lincoln Riley. Who are the names? Oh, Urban Meyer, we heard that. Who are the names? They got to go to college and find a young, brilliant offensive mind. But Jerry Sean wanted Payton somebody. Always. <laughs> Jerry wanted somebody who had some clout. Oh, you brought up a good point. Sean I Payton. That. Sean Remember, Payton. Cowboys let Sean Payton get away. Who'd they choose to keep instead? I believe you were there. It was right after you left. Um, I don't remember. They let Sean Payton get away and sat there and regretted Hurt. that the whole time. I know and that. Sean Payton went on to win a Super Bowl and went on to keep his team at the high highs. Meanwhile, the Cowboys was just floating around from Dave Campo and then you get Jason Garrett and then so yeah, I don't yeah. think the Cowboys make the same mistake. The last thing I will say on this matter is this. Yeah. Remember, Jerry Jones chose to retain Kellen Moore when Mike McCarthy got hired. In what world does an owner who Jerry Jones is, or a general manager, dictate who the offensive coordinator is. The only reason Jerry Jones made sure to keep Kellen Moore is because Jerry always wanted to keep a watchful eye on Kellen Moore. He ain't never wanted him to stray too far. Yeah, I might be in a relationship with McCarthy now, but I got to make sure I keep you in my friend group. Because when I break up with her, or when I break up with him, oh, no. I want to holler at that one. Oh, <laughs> that is not how it goes. That's just a fine homie from the old school. You're like, all right. You, and she was like, I don't, why y'all always kicking it? Nah. We always kicking it, but we ain't going to ever do anything. You don't have any platonic friends? No platonic friends, huh? Obviously, that's why you're super single. <laughs> Staying in the <laughs> NFC, can't even be friends with this dude. Don't miss your chance to win $25,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money on the Fox Bet Super 6 app, where players have won over $5 million. Toto going to help you win the Thursday night football contest tonight. Scan the QR code, download the app now, and play along with us. One of the questions is, who will score the first touchdown? Acho, what do you think? Eagles tight end, Dallas Goddard. Oh, the first one. oh I'm going with Leonard Fournette. You know what it's going to be. It's not even going to be a run. It's just going to be a little flare out the backfield. Give it to Leonard Fournette. All right, one of the other questions is which team will win and by how many points? Acho, what you think? I think that 
Eagles at the link shocked the world. Jalen Hurts has a nice kind of coming out game. Eagles by four. After the take you had with Sanchez, and then now you're going to flip on that one, Ben, stop. Go with your initial feeling on this. It's the Bucks by eight, 31 to 23. Last week, there were six jackpot winners of the Thursday night football contest, and you could be next. Scan the QR code, download the app, and answer six questions about tonight's Bucks eagles game for your shot to win. Terry's money is completely free to play. Killing that prompt. Coming up. Two of the best teams in the AFC will meet this weekend. We'll tell you if the Chargers or Ravens are the bigger threat in the conference. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Gotta find Two of the best teams in the AFC will match up this Sunday when my Chargers go on the road to face my Ravens. Let's be real. Both squads are 4-1 and are coming off impressive wins led by Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson. Ravens are favored by two and a half points, according to Fox Best Sportsbook. Tight. So, Acho, who's the bigger threat in the AFC? Chargers or Ravens? Uh, for me, it's the Ravens. And really, uh, forget all the quarterback, all the other nonsense. Let's talk the real, the real, the real, the real. The real is mm. the Ravens are hungrier. And um, the reason the Ravens really? are hungry is because, to me, the Ravens have some veterans on that squad that realize, yo, this NFL thing, it ain't forever. Uh. Um, mm -hmm. I have to look no further than Calais Campbell, friend of mine, friend of the show, friend of yours, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yes. Remember against the Colts, Monday Night Football, Ravens are down 25 to 17. Mm. It's four and a half minutes left. Let's go. Colts are kicking a field goal. If they get that field goal, it's a two-possession game with four minutes left. For all intents and purposes, it's game over. Well, one of the veterans on that squad, Calais Campbell, runs through the line and blocks a field goal. Field goals do not get blocked in the NFL. At least it happens with incredible infrequency. Mm. But Why? Because the Ravens realize, and at least when you watch them play, they play with a certain desperation that's just harder for other teams to play with. Uh, it's hard as a 20-year-old to realize your days are numbered. But as a 65-year-old, it's a little bit easier because you've been on the earth a little bit longer. Mm. It's harder for a rookie to understand that your NFL days are numbered. Once you've been in the league about four or five years, you realize, mm. hey, ain't nothing guaranteed in this life. In the same manner... I think that Lamar Jackson, I think that the nucleus of that Ravens roster, primarily on defense as well, is a little bit hungrier than the Chargers. And it's just because the Chargers haven't experienced, at least the leader of the Chargers, which is Justin Herbert and even head coach Staley, haven't experienced the realization of, hey, this NFL thing and these opportunities to win oh. aren't as frequent as you might submit. Oh, so you're going with the old hunger argument, huh? Because when the work hard argument doesn't go, then people always go to the, he's hungrier. Oh, the humble beginning, guys. Then Peyton Manning just sits there and like, yeah, I ain't had to be broke to be the best. Like, it just happens like when, oh, this hungry. So by your formula, the oldest team is always going to be the best team because they're the hungriest. They've been waiting for it. Lakers going to be the best this year. Like, boy, stop. We gonna, <laughs> I can't wait the basketball season. I know you're going to pull this one back out. Oh, Chargers or Ravens? Man, geez. you know, I, this is the only team, the Ravens, that I didn't play for, that I actually root for. Oh, my God, harder than picking my favorite kid because that's easy. MJ, you already know that. Um, let me say it's the Chargers, um, and it's by the slight difference. I'm, I feel bad saying this. Justin Herbert is just a little different than even Lamar Jackson, and he is beyond different, beyond special. But Justin Herbert is... The difference maker in this matchup, if you want to say toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now, why am I going to say toe-to-toe? -to -toe? Because there's some rankings that actually give me some courage that the Chargers are better. Uh, in terms of points per game, the differential, Chargers better. That's always a Vegas indicator. Uh, better pass defense, better down, third down offense, major stuff. Better in turnovers, the Chargers. Um, Lamar, I love him. The only slight I got on Lamar right now, for real, is I'm going to check that hand size again, especially around the goal line. His <laughs> hands get smaller around the goal line. Do be fumbling right when he get into the pay dirt, kind of like Deshaun Jackson used to drop the ball right before crossing. Coming up, would Aaron Rodgers ever play for the Bears? We'll tell you if he kept it 100 with his answer. It's just 99. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. Why Lamar be fumbling all the time? Y'all know how it goes uh, down on this show besides it keeping it fresh like your boy. Yeah, we keep it a hundred. But right, yeah, well, Marcellus I, Fun to be back. Oh, sorry. Keep I'm keeping it a hundred. But, yeah, <laughs> but others, they only keep it 99 each day. So we're going to get to the bottom of who's really telling the truth. Case in point, mm. Aaron Rodgers' future in Green Bay is in question. His Packers take on the Bears Sunday, and he was given an interesting scenario about his rival. Y'all take a listen. I've always, you know, enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the city. Um, enjoy the fans, even though they haven't really enjoyed me. That's fine. Um, I get it. Could you see yourself ever playing there when your time no. comes playing here? No. Hard no. It's just not going to happen, man. 
So, Sal, is A-Rod keeping it 100 or is he keeping it 99? He's keeping it 99. That's that podium talk right now. Like, all these rivalries are greater for fans than they are for players. But I understand when you're the franchise quarterback, can't go out there and say, yeah, I'll play for our rivals in the middle of a season. So he's keeping it 99. He should have just said Justin Fields. That's the only reason he's keeping it 100. Oh, really? Who's going to outdo who? You already know who that is. Mm -hmm. That's it for us. Fox Bet Live is next. Where do you film Jeopardy? Come <laughs> 